Listen up, you food lovers. We're about to embark on a culinary adventure. Forget your chicken nuggets and chips. We're diving into rare and exotic foods. Get ready to explore 25 countries. This is about to get messy. This, my friends, is the rarest food on earth today. Getting these ingredients? It's like running an obstacle course. Japan is renowned for many things, one of which is the infamous fugu fish. This delicacy, also known as puffer fish, is celebrated for its unique flavor and texture. However, it comes with a significant risk. If not prepared correctly, fugu can be deadly. The fish contains tetrodotoxin, a potent neurotoxin that can cause paralysis and even death if ingested. As a result, only highly trained and licensed chefs are allowed to prepare and serve fugu in Japan, making it a symbol of both culinary skill and daring for those who choose to eat it. Peru. This makes caviar look like dog food. This Peruvian delicacy just blew my mind. When it comes to culinary adventures, few places on earth can rival the rich, diverse, and often surprising food culture of Peru. While many gourmets around the world swear by the luxury of caviar, there's a Peruvian delicacy that takes luxury and taste to an entirely new level, making caviar seem like mere dog food in comparison. Let me introduce you to the mind-blowing experience of Peruvian sea, urchin roe, locally known as Erizo de Mar, the jewel of the Peruvian coast. Peruvian sea urchin roe is a true treasure harvested from the cold, nutrient-rich waters along the Peruvian coast. Unlike the conventional caviar that comes from sturgeon, these sea urchins offer a unique and intense flavor profile that is highly prized among food enthusiasts. The roe is creamy, buttery, and has an unparalleled briny sweetness that explodes in your mouth with every bite. A culinary symphony of WTF. From the bizarre to the beautiful, we've tasted it all. Join us on this wild journey. Imagine a culinary adventure that transcends the ordinary, plunging into the depths of the bizarre, and emerging with dishes that are as stunningly beautiful as they are perplexing. Welcome to our journey where food becomes art and every bite is a note in a symphony of flavors, textures, and experiences that defy expectations. You foodie, what's your favorite? Share your weirdest food experiences with us. Iceland, fermented shark. You having a laugh? Iceland, you call this food? It's like a Viking's jockstrap. When you think of Icelandic cuisine, what comes to mind? Fresh seafood, lamb dishes, perhaps even some rye bread baked in geothermal heat. But what if I told you one of Iceland's most famous delicacies is a fermented shark, known locally as hakarl. Yes, you heard that right, fermented shark. It's a dish that has been polarizing visitors and even some locals for generations. Imagine this, a piece of Greenland shark, notorious for its toxic flesh when fresh, is buried underground, pressed with stones, and left to ferment for months. After this aging process, it's hung out to dry for several more months. The result is a pungent, ammonia-scented chunk of fish that can leave your taste buds reeling. It's said to be an acquired taste, but honestly, it's hard to imagine anyone acquiring a taste for something that smells like a janitor's cleaning cupboard. Bugs in Thailand, a culinary adventure. Seriously? Insects in Thailand? Absolutely. Thailand is renowned for its vibrant culture, stunning landscapes, and yes, its unique culinary traditions that include eating insects. While it may seem unusual to some, insects are a common snack. 
and even a delicacy in many parts of Thailand. This practice isn't just about survival or tradition. It's also rooted in nutritional benefits and environmental sustainability. Brazil, ants on a log. Try ants on a plate. Amazonian ants, crunchy, tangy, and surprisingly addictive. Amazonian ants, a unique culinary experience. Amazonian ants, known locally as tucandera or sauva, have long been a part of the indigenous diet. These ants are not just any ordinary insects. They are carefully harvested and prepared to bring out their unique flavors. Crunchy and tangy. What makes these ants stand out is their distinctive texture and taste. When fried or roasted, Amazonian ants become incredibly crunchy, offering a satisfying bite. But it's their flavor that truly surprises. Many who try them describe a tangy, citrus-like taste, which is both refreshing and unexpected. This tanginess, combined with their natural crunch, makes Amazonian ants a surprisingly addictive snack. Sardinia maggot cheese? You gotta be kidding me? Yes, yup, heard that correctly. Sardinia, an Italian island renowned for its stunning landscapes, rich culture, and delicious cuisine, is also home to one of the world's most unusual and controversial cheeses, Kasumar Zoo. What makes this cheese so extraordinary is that it's alive with maggots, Kasumar Zoo which translates to rotten cheese in Sardinian, is a traditional sheep milk cheese that undergoes an advanced fermentation process. This process is taken to an entirely new level by the deliberate introduction of Piophila cassei, the cheese fly. The larvae of these flies are what make the cheese so unique. They break down the cheese fats through their digestive actions resulting in a very soft texture and a strong, pungent flavor. Balut in the Philippines, a unique yet controversial delicacy. Balut is a traditional Filipino delicacy that often stirs strong reactions from those unfamiliar with it. Essentially, balut is a fertilized duck egg that contains a developing embryo typically between 14 to 21 days old, which is then boiled and eaten directly from the shell. What exactly is balut? Balut is made from duck eggs that are incubated for a specific period, allowing the embryo to develop partially. The incubation process usually lasts between two to three weeks. After this period, the eggs are boiled, halting further development, and then sold as street food. Africa, Mopane Worm. Crunchy or creepy, Mopane Worm in Africa tastes better than it looks. When it comes to adventurous eating, Africa offers a unique delicacy that might challenge your culinary comfort zone, the Mopane Worm, found primarily in Southern Africa. This edible caterpillar has been a staple in the diet of many indigenous communities for centuries. But the question remains, is the Mopane worm crunchy or creepy? And more importantly, does it taste better than it looks? What is a Mopane worm? The Mopane worm is actually the larva of the emperor moth, Gonimbrasia belina. It derives its name from the Mopane tree, Colophosperma mopane, which is its primary food source. These worms are typically found in the wild during the rainy season when they hatch in large numbers, making them readily available for harvest. Australia, Wichity Grub. Bush Tucker Trial, Wichity Grub in Australia, a juicy, nutty explosion in your mouth. Wichity Grub is a term that might sound unfamiliar to many outside of Australia, but for the indigenous Australians, it is a well-known and cherished part of their traditional diet. This large white wood-eating larva is found in the root systems of various Australian shrubs, particularly the wichity bush from which it gets its name. 
What is a witchetty grub? Witchetty grubs are the larvae of several moth species, most commonly the cossid moth. They are typically found underground, feeding on the roots of acacia bushes and other native plants. These grubs can grow quite large, reaching lengths of up to seven centimeters, about three inches. Mexico. Escamoles. Ant larvae. Don't mind if I do. Escamoles in Mexico. Like delicate, buttery caviar of insects. China, century egg. It's an acquired taste. That's for chicken plucking, sure. The century egg, also known as a hundred year egg, millennium egg, or pidan, is a traditional Chinese preserved food with a history spanning centuries. Despite its dramatic name, the egg is usually preserved for several weeks to a few months not a hundred years. This delicacy is made using a preservation process that involves encasing duck, chicken, or quail eggs in a mixture of clay, ash, salt, quicklime, and rice hulls. Scotland, haggis, don't ask, just eat it. Haggis, Scotland's national dish. You'll either love it or hate it. Haggis is one of Scotland's most famous and traditional dishes, known for its rich history, unique preparation, and distinctive taste. Here's an in-depth look at this iconic Scottish delicacy, history and origins. Haggis has deep roots in Scottish culinary traditions. Dating back several centuries, it is believed the haggis originated as a practical way to utilize the less desirable parts of livestock, ensuring that nothing went to waste. The first known written recipe for haggis appeared in the 15th century, though the dish likely existed long before that. It is often associated with Robert Burns, Scotland's national poet, who famously wrote the poem, Address to a Haggis, in 1786, celebrating the dish as a symbol of Scottish heritage. USA, Rocky Mountain Oysters. They're not oysters. Rocky Mountain Oysters in the US? Bull testicles, my friend. Rocky Mountain Oysters, despite what their name might suggest, are not a type of seafood. They are a culinary specialty in the United States, particularly popular in the Rocky Mountain region. These oysters are actually bull calf testicles, and their preparation and consumption have become a notable part of Western American culture. Historical background. The origins of Rocky Mountain oysters date back to the early days of cattle ranching in the American West. Ranchers looking to maximize the use of every part of the animal began cooking and eating the testicles of young bulls that were castrated to control the herd. This practice was both a matter of practicality and a way to honor the tradition of not wasting any part of the animal. Cambodia, fried spiders, crunchy on the outside, gooey on the inside, surprisingly tasty. Once you get past the legs, Cambodia is a country rich in culture, history, and unique culinary traditions among its most unusual and talked about delicacies is the fried spider, a dish that has both intrigued and repelled travelers from around the world. This fascinating culinary tradition offers a glimpse into Cambodia's resilience and resourcefulness. Historical background. The practice of eating fried spiders, particularly tarantulas, gained prominence during the Khmer Rouge regime in the late 1970s. During this period of severe food shortages and widespread famine, Cambodians turned to unconventional sources of nourishment, including insects and arachnids. What began as a necessity has since evolved into a cultural staple and a point of curiosity for adventurous eaters. Greenland, Kiviak, 
for the adventurous, fermented seabirds and seal skin? You're braver than me. Greenland, the world's largest island, is known for its breathtaking landscapes of icebergs, fjords, and the northern lights. Beyond its natural beauty, Greenland offers a unique cultural experience, particularly for the adventurous foodie Kiviak. What is Kiviak? Kiviak is a traditional Inuit dish that showcases the resourcefulness and ingenuity of Greenlandic cuisine. It involves fermenting small birds, known as auks, inside a seal skin for several months. This ancient delicacy is typically consumed during the harsh winter months and is especially popular during celebrations like birthdays and weddings. Venezuela, la cucaracha, cockroach soup? No way. La cucaracha in Venezuela? Cockroach soup? You're having a laugh. Absolutely not. La cucaracha, which translates to the cockroach in English, is a traditional Venezuelan folk song and not related to any dish involving cockroaches. The song has Spanish origins and is well known throughout Latin America. It's often played at celebrations and social gatherings, and various versions of the lyrics have been adapted over time to reflect different cultural and political contexts. As for cockroach soup, there is no traditional or common dish in Venezuelan cuisine that includes cockroaches. Venezuelan cuisine is rich and diverse, featuring ingredients like corn, plantains, beans, and various meats. Some popular Venezuelan dishes include arepas, cornmeal cakes filled with various ingredients, pabalón criollo, a dish made with shredded beef, black beans, rice, and fried plantains, and halacas, a type of tamale filled with a mix of meats, olives, and vegetables wrapped in plantain leaves. South Korea, Sanakji. It's alive. Chew carefully or you'll end up in A&E. Sanakji is a traditional South Korean dish that stands out for its unusual presentation and preparation. It's a form of ho, raw dish, that involves serving live octopus. The octopus, typically a small species known as nakji, is cut into small pieces and served immediately while the tentacles are still wriggling. This movement continues due to the octopus's nerve activity even after it's been sliced. History and cultural significance. Sanakji has deep roots in Korean culinary traditions, reflecting the culture's appreciation for fresh and minimally processed seafood. The dish is often enjoyed in coastal areas where seafood is a staple of the local diet. It's also popular in bustling metropolitan areas like Seoul, where it can be found in various markets and specialty restaurants. Eating Sanakji is not just about the taste. It's an experience that engages all the senses. The dish is considered a delicacy and is often associated with special occasions or adventurous eating experiences. It's a testament to the Korean culinary principle of freshness, where the quality and origin of ingredients are paramount. Are Italy, casu frazique. Cheese crawling with live maggots? Get a grip. Italy, renowned for its rich culinary heritage, offers an array of traditional foods that vary from region to region. One of the most intriguing and controversial delicacies hails from Sardinia, an island in the Mediterranean Sea. This unique cheese, known as casu frazigu or casu marzu, captures the essence of Sardinian culture while sparking curiosity and debate worldwide. What is casu frazigu? Casu frazigu, also called casu marzu, translates to rotten cheese in Sardinian. This traditional cheese is made from sheep's milk and is known for its soft texture and strong flavor. What sets casu frazigu apart from other cheeses is its production process, which involves the intentional introduction of cheese fly larvae. Japan, Shirako. This is where I draw the line. Shirako in Japan? Fish sperm sacks? No thank you. 
I'm out. Shirako, also known as milt, is one of Japan's most unique and intriguing delicacies. It is essentially the sperm sac of male fish, such as cod, anglerfish, and pufferfish. Despite its unconventional source, shirako is celebrated in Japanese cuisine for its creamy texture and delicate flavor. Let's dive into the fascinating world of shirako and discover why it holds a special place in the hearts of many gourmands. What is shirako? Shirako, translated as white children, refers to the male fish's sperm sacs. While it may sound unusual to the uninitiated, this delicacy has a long-standing tradition in Japanese cuisine. The most commonly used fish for shirako are cod, tara, anglerfish, anko, and pufferfish, fugu. Each type offers a slightly different taste and texture, but all share the characteristic creaminess that defines shirako. Around the world in 80 bites, from the sublime to the ridiculous, we've traveled the globe on our plates, tasting it all. Subscribe now for more culinary adventures. You did good, my food travelers. You survived. I'm impressed. You faced culinary chaos and lived. You took it like a champ. Now go forth and conquer, one bizarre bite at a time. Explore more with Glenn. Don't miss out on the latest travel tips and experiences. Subscribe to Travel with Glenn now, and let's explore the world together. Like, comment, and share to join the community.